Hello everybody, it's Doug here. In the second video on how I designed my interpretation of Brian May's Red Special Guitar from First Principles, I'll explain how I created the overall shape and the internal details of the guitar body and pickguard. I have illustrated this video with TurboCAD screen recordings and animated renders of the 3D objects in the same style as my previous video on the guitar neck. I explained in that video that the Red Special was designed in the imperial system of weights and measures, as would have been the convention in 1960s Britain. I based my designs on photographs in the public domain, and the X-ray images taken in 2003 at St Bartholomew's Hospital in London, using known measurements of commercial replicas, and by making some reasonable assumptions and judgments to fill in any gaps. I have collated known information about the Red Special and its commercial replicas, the Super and Special made by Brian May Guitars, on my website, dsgb.net. Let's quickly review my overall 2D design sketch for the guitar body and pickguard. I created this first to underpin the design of the 3D CAD objects, which themselves form the input to CAM software which calculates the CNC toolpaths in G-code. This is a long list of geometric coordinates in the X, Y and Z planes, which program the CNC machine. However, if you are making the guitar using hand tools, the design sketches will become your working drawings, and underpin the design of any jigs and templates you require, including router guide templates. Check out the video I made in August 2022, provocatively entitled How Brian May Designed His Red Special Guitar. This was supposed to be a light-hearted look at how you can construct the Red Special by drawing around common household objects, but also using manual drafting methods of the mid-20th century. The link is in the description below. In the next section of this video, I'll show you how I constructed the guitar body outline and its basic features from first principles using lines and arc segments derived from circles and ellipses. My philosophy was to reconstruct what I considered to be Brian's theoretical design, and not to try to replicate the as-built state of the Red Special, because this does differ a little in some areas. In terms of accuracy, given parallax errors, distortion and skewing in photographs, I don't claim that my design is any more accurate than about a sixteenth of an inch or 1.6 millimeters to the original guitar in any XY dimension. To help you visualise the logical placement of the shapes, I'll lay down an XY grid with lines spaced at one quarter inch, that's 6.35 millimetres. I won't describe all the coordinates of each object for the sake of brevity. I'll start by laying down an ellipse, 14 inches wide by 11 and a half inches high. I don't know the significance of this measurement, although an article on the Fender website states that the lower body width of a grand concert, double O acoustic guitar, is generally 14 inches wide, and that that was derived directly from a classical guitar. It's probably coincidental that this is also approximately the size of an oval serving platter in household dinner services. The center of the ellipse now forms the reference point for the rectangular coordinates of the other construction elements. Next, I'll lay down a four inch diameter circle, the lower half of which forms the tremolo cavity, and the upper extent locates the rectangle for the bridge, one and three sixteenth inches above the ellipse center. The pickups appear to be located at two inches, four and one eighth inches, and six and a quarter inches above the ellipse center, and the six inch long neck mortise is bisected by the ellipse. Next, let's place three and five eighth inch diameter circles to set the concave arcs for the waist, and join these to the main ellipse with two inch long line segments. Note that the center of these circles appear to be coincident with the neck pickup. The horn tips appear to fit one and one quarter inch diameter circles, and are placed four and a quarter inch and three and three quarter inch off the main axis of the guitar body. The cutaways are formed by a 2.5 inch diameter circle on the base side and a 2 inch diameter circle on the treble side, and are placed 2 inches off axis. To complete the design, I'll add the various lines to join the arcs. Here I've used a 2 inch by 1 inch ellipse to form the curve of the large horn, although in manual drafting, a French curve or flexible curve would be used. Finally, you can see that these construction objects are bounded elegantly by a 17 inch diameter circle. Moving on to looking at the design of the internal cavities, this requires careful interpretation of the x-rays, and I spent many hours on this. These are not high resolution images generated from a 2D scan or a sophisticated modern 3D imaging technique such as MRI. You can see that the upper and lower edges are offset, and I assume that there's also some parallax error. I won't discuss the structures in detail, or spend time constructing them from first principles in this section. I'll just show you the result, and I'll talk about some of the key features. 
Firstly, let's look at an early iteration of the frictionless bridge and tremolo design, which was going to use the assembly shown in this picture. I've represented this in CAD so we can imagine how the red special body might have looked with it in place. We can't see the underside of the upper layer, but at this stage the cavity structure appears to be more straightforward. The lower body section has a large oak insert cut from a table, which appears to be 4 and 3 quarter inches or 120 millimeters wide. Two circular holes are visible in the lower section of the guitar body, one in the upper horn area and one at the lower part of the control chamber. We can only speculate about the reasons for these, but they could have been drilled to act as starting points for chiselling out the blockboard chambers before the design was modified, since they approximately align with the cavity in the upper layer. Alternatively, they could have been added later to increase the amount of void space, which I calculate is approximately one-third of the guitar body volume. I incorporated the pillars on which the switch frame rests into the blockboard design for simplicity, but it's more likely that Brian fashioned these from sections of dowel and glued them onto the sides and base of the control cavity. The ledge on the upper section is supported by a pillar which the switch frame leg butts against, and the aluminium plate on which the potentiometers and capacitor are mounted is attached to a cuboid. I made both of these from oak. All those construction lines clean up to yield the design sketches. The 3D CAD objects are generated by extruding the 2D outlines to 3 quarters of an inch thickness and subtracting either a full thickness cavity or by leaving a layer to match the thickness of the plywood used. In the final section of this video, I'll quickly illustrate how I worked up the pick guard shape from first principles, using the same method I used for the guitar body outline, focusing on key features in preference to details. Excluding any manual cutting and shaping discrepancies, the pick guard tracks the guitar body outline, maintaining a gap of half an inch. So the right edge is formed from an ellipse 13 inches wide by 10 and a half inches high, moving clockwise from the tail region where the volume control knob is located. The tip is formed from a one and a half inch diameter circle, which is joined by a one and three quarter inch long line segment to a concave arc derived from a three inch diameter circle. Next is a 2 and 3 16 inch long line segment, then the lower left corner circle is 1 and 3 quarter inch diameter. That brings us to the long curve at the left side, which might have just been drawn using a flexible curve to join up the lower left corner to the aerofoil shaped tip, but it is a good fit to a 2 foot or 24 inch diameter circle, and that's how I constructed it in TurboCAD. That's all from me for this video, so thanks very much for watching. I hope that I've given you some more insights into the elegant design underpinning Brian May's iconic and unique Red Special guitar. Please check out my other YouTube videos and websites which cover a wide range of topics on Brian May's guitars and musical equipment.